give a big round of applause for Gil Gerard! <laughs> So did you have fun in it? Did you really have a good time? Yes. I thought it was a great convention. I enjoyed it very much. It was great to meet those of you I met. Those of you I didn't, tough. <laughs> you had your chance. Anybody got any questions? Come on, so I get up. This is the way it works. There you go, see? Yes. Oliver? Yes. How are you? I'm See, fine, I, thank you. Huh? I'm fine, thank you. Glad to hear it. Thank you for coming to Stuttgart. Thank you. Um, my question is, uh, do you know, after the second season, uh, why there is now third season uh, return to Earth with Buck Watchers in the TV show? Well, what happened was that uh, in the second season, the milieu in which it was set, a buck leaving Earth and going off on the searcher and all that kind of stuff basically destroyed the show and the audience for it. So it was canceled. I had pitched to, to the powers that be at Universal. I'd gone there and said, look, this is what I always wanted to see happen with Buck Rogers. I wanted to see Buck stay on Earth, go out and have adventures on Earth, discover how people were staying alive or whatever, what, ha what happened to them. Uh, basically because Buck has not been on Earth for 500 years, why would he take off again? So uh, they said, that's, wow, that's the best idea we've heard in two years. And they said, why haven't we heard it before? I said, because no one would listen to me. So they asked me to pitch it to NBC, which was the network it was on. The president of NBC was a good friend of mine, so I called him up and I said, you know, this is what I just pitched to the people at Universal. They liked it so much they want me to pitch it to you. So I pitched it to him and he said, well, if the show is picked up, that's the way we'll go next year. Uh, the show wasn't picked up. It was the most expensive show on television at that time. It was a million and a half dollars an episode then. Now, forget it. I mean, it'd be like cheap stuff but uh, that's one of the reasons it just it didn't get the ratings and so they canceled it so thank you, thank you. my accountant cried it was terrible somebody else come on it's the last day you gotta have questions everybody know where the men's rooms are i can answer that for you there you go see it's just asking the right question on my part uh, you said something about, um, maybe you could elaborate on that, um, that the uh, second season basically um, destroyed the show. Why? You think the audience didn't like it at all? Or oh, I knew they didn't. They didn't. The reason, I was, uh, I was signatory to the ratings, so that I got the ratings overnight from the show. And the, the Time of the Hawk, which was the two-hour special that introduced the second season, um, we started off with good ratings, and we lost rating points every 15 minutes to the end of the two hours. Uh, and I realized that was the end of the show right there, because that was a... You know, supposed to be the whiz bang show that I was going to love, and people just started tuning out in droves all the way around. Every 15 minutes, we lost so much so that when I uh, talked to Tom Christopher the next day, he was the guy who played Hawk, and I said, "You might as well start looking for another job because this show's not going to last past this season." So that was it. And what happened was I just decided to go 
because I kept saying to these people, look, the buck should stay on earth. It would be cheaper for one thing, be a better budget, and the stories could be more interesting. And I think you'd have a wider audience because people would like to see sort of what is our idea of what is earth like 500 years in the future. Wouldn't you like to see something about that? No, that's kind of interesting. But just to go off, and basically what they did was the producer, they changed producers, and basically what he did was he just stole the entire concept of Battlestar Galactica. But see, I was so sci-fi stupid, I thought it was Star Trek. But because it was going off to find the lost tribes of Earth, and I thought that was Star Trek's mission. I guess I was wrong, I don't know. But somebody said, oh no, that was Battlestar. I was like, oh great. That show got canceled the year before. It's a good thing to, to so let's follow that lead. That's exactly what we did. So, unfortunately, it's, it's very frustrating because I thought that Buck Rogers uh, had the potential to be something very interesting. But I think, well, which was typical at that time of television particularly, they didn't know how to handle sci-fi. They didn't have any respect for the sci-fi audience. They thought they could put any kind of crap out there and you guys would just eat it up. And it's like, no, these people have a brain. They like to be, they like to pundle, ponder puzzles. And you're just giving them the same old stuff, just wrapped in a sci-fi package. So, yes, sir. Did, um, in Germany, the, we didn't have the series in Germany in the 80s. It just, I think it came later. We had uh, two pilots, two pilots as a one and a half hour movie in the cinema. Did it was one hour. It was a movie first. Did you have a theatrical run in the yes. States as well? It was a motion picture before it, became, it was a series. Okay, so the pilot was planned as a motion picture and then... It well, was actually, we shot the movie. It went into the theaters uh, because of the success of the movie in the theaters. It was one of the top five grossing motion pictures in 1979. Uh, because of that success, it was picked up as a series. They took the feature and cut it. They remixed the opening sequence, and then they cut various uh, aspects of it or whatever to bring it, trim it down for television, and that became the pilot. But it was actually the movie first. Did you hear anything about remake plans? No. I haven't followed that one, but I always I keep wondering why nobody wants to remake Buck Rogers. I think it was a great I thing. I don't know. It's very funny. And even, what? Even Flash Gordon, I think, is being remade again. But nobody's talking about Buck Rogers. It has to do with the people who own the rights. You think? I'm pretty sure. I've tried to deal with them myself, and uh, it's the old case of... Um, of cranium up the rectum. <laughs> you think? I, I know, I know. Isn't that a bit harsh? No, it's not. It's actually the truth. <laughs> if you had gone through the number of times I've talked to those people about various aspects of Buck Rogers, you would understand from the, the muffled quality of their voices that their craniums are stuffed very high up their rectums. So who owns the rights? Is it still Universal? No, Universal never owned the rights. They just owned the rights to that particular iteration of Buck Rogers. The people who own the rights to Buck Rogers are the people who own the rights since the 20s when it was a serial oh, syndicated cartoon, a comic strip, and then it became a serial, and uh, then it became a movie. It's a pity. It is. It's a waste. Because it could be, it could have been a really great project, and it was very successful when it was out. Simone. Yes. Hi. Thanks. How are you doing? <laughs> We're fine. Good. I hope you understand me. You have in the Surrey so very sexy outfit. You like it? Say that again. Sexy outfit. So. Oh, the outfit. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh. well, and, yes, Keep moving me. like that, baby. There you go. Yes. And put that to music. There you go. <laughs> Did I like it? I, yes. It was okay. Uh, the white outfit was very uncomfortable. They, um, it was made of spandex. Everybody thinks of spandex as being stretchable. 
It's not. <laughs> Trust me on that one. Um, and also, if you had the slightest moisture on your skin, you couldn't get it on. So I had to wear silk underwear, long johns, all the way here, all the way down, just to get this thing on. By the end of the day, when I took it off, I had literally lines in my skin from the, the piping that was on the legs of the thing. Yeah, and God forbid I had to go to the bathroom. That was terrible. <laughs> but, the cost of the, uh, what the coal and waste. Aaron Gray, you yeah. have no contact with him. With, his? with her? Yes, with her. I, I see her occasionally. She does conventions. Okay. okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Simone. Someone else? It's the last day, come on. Pull it up, let's go. Anybody back there? You know, if you don't ask me questions, it'll all be over and you'll be on your way home. Ah, here he comes, come on. Yeah, I remember watching you when I was younger. Whatever happened to Twiggy? I turned him into a toaster. <laughs> no, his, uh, that's Felix Sela. He lives in Las Vegas. Um, I just sent him an email, as a matter of fact, today. Because uh, some guys are interested in him coming to England for three different conventions. Uh, later this year, actually. Uh, Felix and I, we talk at least once or twice a month. I try to get him into as many conventions as I can because He's a very popular character, not only from Buck Rogers, but from Cousin It. He did all the flying Ewok stunts in Star Wars. He was in Star Trek. I mean, he's, I said to people, he's got a wider fan base than I do, for God's sake. But, uh, uh, yeah, he's, a, he's an irascible old Italian. But we have a lot of fun together. He's a good guy. Okay, thank you. Yes. He actually had the suit until about, I think five years ago or so, he had his suit, it was falling apart, and somebody paid him $25,000 for the suit. So he said, I wasn't gonna turn that down. He said, because it was only about another month before the thing was dust, so. But apparently the guy took the suit and then reconditioned the whole thing, so. It still exists somewhere. Now see, he would, ah, there you go. Yeah, somebody has to keep the conversation. Absolutely. <laughs> it's not time to go home yet. We're all about Rogers fans, so basically we know about the series. Can you tell us some stories from behind the scenes? What was the most bizarre thing that happened to you, or the most funny thing? Oh, come on. Oh, now it's up to me, huh? No, it's up to you. Oh, I keep us entertained. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, something bizarre. Hmm. Can't think of anything. Everything was just so stayed. Well done. Um, I remember my stunt guy uh, who passed away. He's younger than I am, and he passed away a few years ago. Um, he was a really uh, great karate expert. He actually worked with Bruce Lee, trained Bruce Lee's son. Uh, and he was a really good stunt double for me. And I was talking about the spandex suits. Well, he tried to do a double leaping kick and split the thing right down the butt. So we had to put some expansion things in there for him. Um, I remember they were very excited about showing me the mock-up for the Starfighter for the the cockpit scene where I was going to be in the cockpit in a battle or whatever. They were very excited about it. They brought me in, showed me all the stuff, all the lights and things that were inside, and this is really great. And I looked inside and I said, that's really terrific, but where am I supposed to put my feet? <laughs> it went straight, like, here was the top of it, 
and here was the seat. But there was no, no place for my legs. I said, what am I supposed to do with that? And they were like, oh, I said, did you forget something? Like, my legs have to go in there too? I can't unscrew them and just, you know, you lift it in here. So they had to stop and cut a hole for my legs. Their enthusiasm kind of waned. And I said, also, I said, there's no backing here. I mean, it doesn't it seem like a little uh, bad, the fact that there's nothing back there to brace me because of the forces that, you know, would be involved with a dogfight or whatever. I'm just floating in space in this thing. So, oh yeah, okay, so they had to put backing on it and make it look like a kind of a fighter pilot thing. Uh, I remember with special effects guys, there was a scene where when I fired the ray gun, there was just a, it was a thing that was like a flashlight on the end of it. And the trigger was just a button that I would push and the light would go on. And that would cue the special effects people to begin to draw the laser beam. You know, I don't know how you, how many of you know this, but they had to hand paint frame by frame the laser beam as it came out. So what would happen is I'd pull the thing and the light would go on and then do a close up of uh, let's say a light switch or something or a computer terminal and it would explode. So then what they had to do was then they took it and they drew the laser. You're not allowed to leave. He doesn't care. Attention. Anyway, they would draw it all the way over until it hit the light thing and I think it would then hit and it show the explosion. And one time I was there and I pulled the trigger and the thing exploded and the cover blew right past my ear. So I thought, I mean, who did I piss off in special effects? They're trying to kill me, at least take my ear off. But uh, yeah, then I did a Western and I did a gun battle. And as I leaped behind a, law, a rock, they, they, they were called squibs, these charges of gunpowder. And the squib went off just as I went over and it blew a hole in my leg. So I think, you know, I think it was the same guys from Universal. And it's like, I must have pissed one of these guys off. Hopefully I didn't have an affair with his wife or something, I just don't know it, but anyway. You're supposed to smile about that. I was very chaste through the whole thing. Thank you very much. So anybody else? This man's working his ass off over here. None of you have any questions? Do you want to know what, there you go. Oliver, do you tell him? Um, if you make action scene with the ray gun and you shoot a villain, um, uh, do you often uh, say what is written in the script after that uh, and make a joke? Um, uh, is, uh, what, how much uh, from you is in the role of Buck Rogers? Um, well, actually quite a bit. Um, the first season, I basically rewrote every script that we shot because they were pretty bad. And uh, so I would sit, I had an office, dressing room.